Hi Stephen, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine and your beautiful Kenmore machine is, well it's mechanically done. I still have to uh, clean and polish the exterior but uh, she's running and sewing great and uh, uh, I'm going to uh, give you a little tutorial walkthrough on how to uh, thread the machine, how to wind the bobbin, uh, how to work the various controls and it's possible that you already are very familiar with this machine but uh, we'll go over it anyway uh, I'm going to take off the old thread from the bobbin I think it's bad form to keep putting thread on it with the top of this thread that's already on your bobbin. So to wind the bobbin. Let's wind the bobbin in white. To wind the bobbin, put your spool on the spool pin, go around the uh, the tension device for the bobbin winder, which is right here, spring loaded, and you're going to wrap around backwards. You're going to go around this way, so you're crossing back over your thread. And that adds just a little bit more tension to it and it lines up your uh, lines up your thread with a bobbin winder put your thread through any one of the holes in the side of the bobbin and hold it there while you put several wraps on the bobbin to hold the thread in place while it winds now, if the thread coming on in this direction over your bobbin, put the bobbin on the bobbin winder, push the lever in to the center of the bobbin, and release the clutch knob, which is the comb wheel in the center of your hand wheel, by turning it towards you, uh, eighth of a turn or so, until it hits its stop. Then the wheel can spin and wind the bobbin without the rest of the machine cycling. So here we go. I'm going to put a little uh, tension on the thread spool just so it doesn't spin wild. We're not going to put a whole lot of thread on. This is just for a test. You can see it's winding evenly up and down, up and down. And as it fills, it's going to press this lever further and further out until when it's full, it'll pop loose and stop winding the bobbin. So take your thread off, reclutch your machine by tightening the chrome knob, and then we're going to thread the machine. Let's thread it in red just to keep everything different here. Um, spool pins just in loosely because I'm going to take it off the packet. Thread on the spool pin, go into the curly thread guide on the back, into the curly thread guide on the front. Straight down between the discs of the presser foot, I mean of the tension assembly. And as you can see, there are two sets of discs here, separated by a flat disc. It doesn't matter which side you go in, unless you happen to be using a double needle and two, two spools of thread. Then just make sure that they're in separate channels. So go in between the discs of the upper tension, all the way around, and pick up this thin check spring. Pull the check spring up until the thread goes into the notch at the top of the tension assembly. Then make sure your thread, your uh, tension spring doesn't stick up there. It needs to be down here where it can put a little bit of tension on the uh, thread when the, between stitches. Go into the thread guide above the tension assembly. Go through the take up lever from right to left. Go down to this big thread guide, this thread guide, and down to the thread guide on your, doesn't matter which side you go in either, unless you're using two threads.
the thread guide of the needle clamp and then through the eye of the needle from the front towards the back. And it'll make it, make it a lot easier to poke your thread through if you cut a nice clean end on it. Okay. Make sure that your thread doesn't get wrapped around the needle. Now, holding your uh, needle thread loosely, oh, wait a minute, back up. Not ready to take up the bottom thread yet because the bottom thread's not in the bobbin case yet. So, you put this bobbin in the bobbin case with the thread coming off the top in this direction. Take the thread up into the slanted slot there and under the flat leaf spring of the lower tension which is on the side of the bobbin hold on to this little lever the spring loaded lever in the front of the bobbin and that keeps your bobbin from dropping out while you're handling it make sure your thread is not behind the bobbin where it's going to get stuck now with this little finger here pointing up so it goes into the notch that's made for it down here. Slip your bobbin case and bobbin onto the spindle of the hook. And that finger is in the notch so the bobbin case cannot spin with the bobbin. Now we can bring up the lower thread. Hold your upper thread uh, loosely. Turn the hand wheel towards you one full revolution and your, the needle will take the thread down where the hook will pick it up, wrap it around the bobbin, and bring up your lower thread. So there it is. Put the thread between the toes of the presser foot and towards the back of the machine. This is a really sweet machine, by the way. So it's really nice, smooth, powerful. I've been going right over the thick seams on the bottom of this jeans pant leg no problem lower the presser foot onto the fabric using the lever in the back and you're ready to sew when you sew uh, you're going to have to decide how long you want your stitches to be if you're sewing something lightweight and delicate you might want your stitches fine and close together if you're sewing something heavy duty you might want them a little your stitches a little bit longer uh, if you're just basting something in and you plan to pick the stitches out later, or you want to use your longest stitch. Uh, but this is your stitch length dial here. It goes from zero to six. And I believe that's how many stitches per inch rather than millimeters. Yeah, it's got to be stitches per inch. Uh, we're going to put it on about 12 and that's kind of medium for regular fabric. Uh, stitch length, stitch width. That means how far the needle is going to zig and zag when you put it on a zigzag stitch. We're going to start with a straight stitch, so we're going to turn it all the way down to S. The uh, straight stitch position is marked with an S, and then as to make your zigzag wider and wider, the scale goes all the way up from one to four. So, stitch with dial on S. This dial down here uh, chooses your stitch pattern. And when, you, when you're going to change this stitch pattern, first make sure that your needle is up out of the fabric because your needle is going to move back and forth as you do this and you don't want to bend your needle. Um, if you look at this, and you probably can't see it on the camera, but uh, it has a little example of what each stitch looks like. But on each setting, there are two stitch patterns. One is orange and the other is white. 
And you'll notice up here you have this selector knob and you have an orange dot and a white dot. For just regular stitching, you want to be on orange. That gives you a regular straight stitch or a zigzag or a blind stitch or a scallop stitch or a few others. Um, and that's where we're going to start. Straight stitch, 12 stitches per inch. This is your feed drop. This is what drops the teeth of the feed dogs that move the fabric. And when this is in a down position, the teeth don't come up above the needle plate, so they don't touch the fabric and don't move the fabric. And that's what you're going to use if you want to do free motion sewing or uh, maybe some mending or machine embroidery or just art. If you want to draw pictures, uh, you would uh, release the pressure all the way. I mean, you would drop the feed there. But we're going to put it in the U position for up. This is the pressure on your presser foot. Uh, for regular, uh, let's go back to the making art idea. If you're going to do machine embroidery or patching or uh, any number of other things where you want to move the fabric and not the feed dogs, press down on this collar here and the button in the center pops all the way up and it releases the pressure on the uh, sewing foot. So, uh, with this, with the feed dog's in a down position and the pressure off, then you can move the fabric around. And to do that, you'll probably want to get a, uh, an embroidery hoop or something to keep your fabric taut while you stitch. But for regular sewing, up position for the feed dogs, and you're going to want to press this down about halfway. Halfway is average for average fabric, uh, like cotton shirting, um, uh, light denim. Anyway, yeah, for more delicate fabrics, you may want to go down just a little ways. Just enough so that the uh, machine moves the fabric with authority, but it's not uh, marring your delicate fabric. But again, for this, we're going to go down about halfway. If you're sewing something really heavy, upholstery or something, uh, garment leather, you may want to go down a little further for more pressure on your sewing foot. The main thing is you want to have just enough pressure to move your fabric with authority. So now we've got <coughs> feed dogs are up. We're set on uh, straight stitch, 12 stitches per inch, regular stitches, not, uh, not the uh, stretch stitches, and the pressure on the sewing foot is set. We've retightened the clutch knob and we're ready to sew. So just give it a little gasp and don't push or pull on your fabric. Don't try to help the fabric move. Let the feed dogs move it. If you move the fabric and flex the needle, the needle is going to miss the needle hole, hit the needle plate, explode, and uh, you just don't want that. So guide it but let the machine move it. And right down this heavy seam. If you wear Levi's, you know how thick that seam can be. Now the straight stitch. Uh, this lever over here is your reverse. So if you want to back up a little, back tack, press that down. Forward, reverse, forward, reverse, forward, reverse, forward. To zigzag, you want to add a little bit of stitch width. So we're going to go from the S up to, let's go all the way up to four. It's up to you how wide or how narrow you want your zigzag to be. Uh, this is the widest stitch. And you can see now the needle. Uh, 
um, that was straight, uh, uh, there's an S on the, uh, stitch pattern for straight stitch or zigzag or, uh, we'll talk about the uh, straight stitches in a minute. Um, let's turn it to a scallop stitch. If you're going to do a scallop stitch, um, you're, you're going to want, uh, to have your shortest stitch length. And uh, as you turn your stitch length down towards zero, there's a little area here that's marked in red. And that's for doing these close together um, satin stitches. If you get it too close together without a special foot called a satin stitch foot, and your fabric doesn't move, um, it's going to build up a wad of thread under the needle plate, and uh, you're going to have to stop and cut that out. So. You want it to move. We want to be sure it's moving. You want to be down in the red area for this, but again, fabric moving. Okay, now. You may or may not be able to see that scallop stitch. With a satin foot, satin stitch foot, we could move those zigzags closer together and it would just look like a nice little eyebrow of uh, pretty line next stitch is blind stitch that's where you stitch several sti straight stitches and then one zigzag stitch several more straight stitches and another zigzag stitch and I'm not a seamstress. I'm not sure what they use it for. I think they use it when they're putting two pieces of fabric together side by side um, and a couple other things. But uh, just to let you know that it will do it when you know what to do with it. So here we go. Several straight stitches and one two thread. And it looks really good. Okay, the next stitch is, I'm not sure what it's called, it's, uh, it's like a blind stitch except that instead of a sharp zigzag it's flattened off across the top. And no doubt it's got a good purpose, I just don't know what it is. Um, yeah, we'll leave it in the widest stitch width for this. And again, I don't know what this stitch is for, but it does it well. Uh, and there's, uh, let's see, one other stitch, and that's a, it's a zigzag stitch. Uh, it's good for uh, stretchable fabric. It's a zigzag stitch that's made up of a bunch of tiny little stitches on each zig and zag. Instead of going zig, zag, zig, zag, it goes zig, 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 zag, 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 zig, 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 zag, 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 like that. Sorry. Here's the picture. fun part. When you turn this, let's get the needle up, yeah, when you turn this selector switch over to the white dot, then you're uh, now in stretch stitches where the machine moves the fabric forward, then back, then 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 forward, then back and on and on and on, uh, so that you're doubling up each stitch. Or maybe even tripling up each stitch. I'm not sure. But, uh, so let's go back to about 12 stitches per inch. And let's go back to the S mark for straight stitches. 
and we're going to do a straight stretch stitch. So you can see the fabric moving back and forth. And that zigzag is tripled up now. Each of those zigs and zags is, no, doubled up, tripled up. Yeah, it looks like it's tripled up. Um, and I meant to do that straight. I forgot to change my stitch width back to the S. This is what it looks like without the yeah, zig <laughs> looking stitches that you can do with this. I'm going to go over to this stitch, which is the uh, the one that uh, did the uh, multiple stitch zigzag. And a stretch stitch makes a really cool kind of a chain link pattern. So let's give it a little width. Let's go to about two on the stitch width. Twelve on the stitch length. Um, I'm going to shorten up the stitch length a little bit. stitch width just to see what happens. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Got the stitch width on three, stitch length on about 13, I guess. There's no 13 mark, but we're just above the 12 there. Uh, and that, basically, that's it. That's uh, all of your uh, different functions, oh, other than your power switch that turns your light and your motor off or on. Um, if you're, uh, uh, you need to clean and oil your machine on a regular basis. Um, if you're sewing all day, every day, uh, make sure you oil your machine uh, every three days to a week. Uh, and to do that, you're going to want to take off the two screws that hold the needle plate on and brush away the dust and lint that collects around your feed dogs. Uh, and you'll open the front here and brush out the dust and lint. And look underneath, brush out the dust and lint. And your top lifts off. If there's any dust or lint in there, you want to brush and vacuum that brush and vacuum the lint and dust out of everything. And then uh, following the guide in your user manual, uh, you're gonna put one or two drops of oil at each oiling point. Um, and uh, for most of them, there's an oil hole or a spot on the, uh, in the case of the needle bar, a drop of oil at the top and bottom there. Uh, basically everywhere that parts turn and rotate and slide against each other uh, you want a drop of sewing machine oil don't use 3-in-1 oil or WD-40 use uh, good quality mach sewing machine oil and that'll make your machine last a whole lot longer so I'll get her cleaned and polished up and uh, then I'll uh, send you an invoice and then we'll get her home to you Beautiful machine and uh, running and sewing so nice. Uh, if you have come to this video from somewhere else on the internet, follow the link and come here. We are Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine. We are on Stagecoach Road out in the coast range of Oregon, so we are stagecoachroadsewing.com. 
And if you come out to our website, uh, actually it's down while we're here at our winter location. Is it down? No, you can go there and you can see all of the uh, hundreds and hundreds of machines that we've restored over the last few years. Um, pictures from all different angles. A little bit of information about each machine and um, uh, usually at the top of the page and when, when we get back from uh, like I said in the Sonoran Desert where we're uh, wintering uh, I'll put the uh, the machines back up that are for sale um, we're uh, far from our warehouse now so I can't really be packing and shipping machines from Oregon so uh, we've just kind of uh, disabled that part of the website for now but you can go and look at all the Beautiful, beautiful machines. Uh, decades, a couple of decades, a couple and a half decades, actually. Uh, of beautiful machines. We actually, actually, we restored well over a thousand machines, but uh, uh, you'll see a few hundred of them online. That may be my car alarm, so I better go. Uh, stagecoach rowing road, stagecoachroadsewing.com, and we'll see you there. Here she is, polished up and ready to come home. Um, I uh, realized that I didn't mention the tension. Uh, I have it set so that your uh, tension for regular fabric, regular thread, you know, like uh, shirting or light denim, uh, is about three. Uh, for heavier fabric, you may want a little more tension for uh, delicate fabric you may want a little less tension but three is your ballpark so thank you Stephen it's been a it's been a pleasure working on this beautiful machine and uh, we'll get an invoice to you and then we'll get her on her way home okay thanks bye